Hello everyone, my name is Hope and welcome back to my channel. I like musicals, they're a big part of my life and today we're seeing Sondheim Old Friends. I just turned my light on because it was a bit dark and I currently look like a mess, but it's fine because it's not for like another four hours. Now, I've been wanting to see Sondheim Old Friends for so long, like a ridiculous amount of time because if you didn't know, I love Sondheim. Everything about him, his whole life, his all of his music, it just, it speaks to me and I love it. And everyone who knows me well enough knows that I love Stephen Sondheim. And I'd been trying to get brush tickets. I'm going to sit down now just because I need to contain my excitement. So I've been trying to get brush tickets for ages and I just just haven't been getting any and so basically today because of there was tube strikes supposed to be going on we got the day off but then the tube strikes got cancelled but we still get the day off i was like i want to see some old friends i want to see it so badly so i just decided to buy a, a ticket just a regular ticket my ticket was 35 pounds which is actually only six pounds 50 more than rush tickets because there's like a special offer on at the moment for the show and i don't have the best seats in the world i'm like basically the top of the grand circle which which is the second level so you have stalls grand circle upper circle i've forgotten what it's called anyway but essentially what i did is i went on seat plan which if you don't know get on it because basically it tells you what the view of all the different seats in the theater are based on people who've done it already and all the people who, who had sat in that seat was like it's an, an amazing seat great view not obstructed like it's just a bit high and so i was like okay I'll book it. It is a <laughs> it is a financial decision for me because we are trying to save money and I've already paid for the gym this week. So it's taking money out of my bank account, but I think it's worth it. And it's called treating myself because I never spend my money. So I'm spending it on this. But I'm gonna see you in a couple of hours when I look a bit more presentable. And I'm going to swan time old friends. Okay, it's later in the day. I'm quite hot in this outfit, but I kind of think it slays. I've gone for a suit vibe. I'm overdressed, more than definitely, but I don't care because for some time it's worth it. And I also love this outfit. Like, do I need sunglasses? No, it's dark outside. Am I gonna wear them anyway? Yeah. Like, is this jacket is too big and I know that and pairing it with all baggy clothes probably doesn't do me any justice, but I think I look cool and I like it. So that's what I'm gonna do. For reference, I don't know where the sunglasses are from. No idea. Ties from a charity shop. This is also from a charity shop. This top is H&M. The pants are monkey. And the shoes. This Get this balance right now. Are from um, Stradivarius. What is that? Half six. And actually it takes me 15 minutes to get there. Good theatre etiquette. Get there early. So I think I'm gonna leave now. I also forgot to say that I feel like my outfit is giving Bobby. Oh, I'm gonna get run over. Not the revival, the original. Hello, I'm in the theatre. I'm also, I'm pretty sure I'm surrounded by Mark B students because there's like 30 people here that all seem to know each other. But um, I got myself a program. I'm really spending all of my student loan, but it's fine. It's okay. And this was 12 pounds. I was like 12 pounds, but it's actually like really good quality and like, proper so i'm not that bothered this is my view i'm saying it's a pretty good view for 35 quid like it was special offer but i didn't get rush tickets like i literally just bought it today and it was this price yesterday as well and i can't lie i'm so ready i'm so ready for two and a half hours of straight up time i'm so excited yes ready and waiting i think this also must just be quite a small theater because like i said i'm the top of the dress level, which is the second floor. <laughs> and like, I can, like it, it just seems quite small. But again, I'm not gonna play it. Because I think I've got a great seat and I'm gonna have a grand old time. It's not Mount View, it's Arts Head. And I know that Arts Head get free tickets because they have loads of grads, but um, it's Arts Head. But they just have a friend from Mount View who's also there. Wearing mascara was a bad idea because I've genuinely just been crying on and off for the past an hour and a half. I'm in awe. Like, I feel like if you didn't like Sondheim as much as I do, you wouldn't be enjoying it as much because I love him. I've genuinely just been crying. Like, can you see my eyes, how glossy they are? Because I've literally just been crying because I love it so much. It's so good. And all I've done is cry. Like, I can't even, like, it's beautiful, like, I'm not even bothered about, like, how famous people are, like, obviously that's amazing, but this music's just so good, man. I have to be in this one line. Get me in one. <laughs> Oh. 
Oh, I can't even explain how much I love that. Like, I'll talk about it more in my review when I'm not literally crying my eyes out. But, oh my god, I loved it so, so much. <laughs> Bonjour, this is my review. Also, I'm sorry about this camera angle. I wish it was slightly higher, but this is the height my desk is, so I'm just gonna have to deal with that, so sorry. But yes, this is my review of Old Friends. So, as you can tell, I freaking loved it. Sondheim is so important to me, and that definitely impacted how much I loved it. And I have a feeling that if you weren't as big a Sondheim fan, you wouldn't like it as much as I did. But I love him in every fibre of my being, and I love his music. So it was a great time for me. I don't know if I saw any of the uh, alternate I think I saw one or two I'm not entirely sure but it didn't really impact my experience as the people who were like not in it I didn't recognize and the people that were were the ones that I knew if that makes sense should you go and see it my vote is yes as I said I loved it and I would go back a million times was the show itself like out of the park like every person was phenomenal like everything was no I'll be completely honest no it's not but I I don't think that is what the show is about. The show is not about being the epitome of the best show ever in regards to Sondheim. It's not trying to be like this phenomenal Sondheim production. That's not what it's trying to be. It's trying to recognise how much Sondheim has done for musical theatre and how important and he was and how he touched people around him that worked with him and how important that is to everyone and just in his memory. That's probably the worst way I could have phrased that but hopefully you catch my drift. Like the people in it have done his shows, have met him, have worked with him and they were doing this in his honour and as a tribute to him in memoriam this show wasn't about being like a tony award-winning show that was never what it was about and i'm happy that it's not because what's important is how we remember him so let's talk about the actual show i'm gonna start with bernadette peters and Lais longer because they were like our two main people who were like build it was so interesting seeing these people perform live like obviously i've been aware of these people for a very very long time and i know a lot about them because i love musicals so much and to see them perform on stage was just a bit of a surreal experience Leia Salonga is so talented like i cannot even explain she sang loving you from passion and it was beautiful and as someone who has never really listened to that song in a massive capacity she's got me hooked and it was gorgeous she was mrs lover and i loved her mrs lover as a performance i didn't actually realize she had played mrs lover in singapore and like i feel like i need to see it again because i just thought it was so iconic i know a few people didn't like it but personally i was like i love love it i think it's such an interesting take that she put on the character was the accent a bit dodge yeah but is it as bad as annalee ashford no so i'm gonna Letting it slide. She also sang Everything's Coming Up Roses, and I just, every time she was sat, would sing, I'd be like, I want to see you play this role now because I loved it. Like, her Gypsy Rose, I'd be so interested to see how she will play Mama Rose. I would be so interested. And then Bernadette Peters was just being iconically Bernadette Peters. Like, she sang I Know Things Now from Into the Woods, which is extremely bizarre when that was Little Red Riding Hood song and Little Red Riding Hood's supposed to be about 10. I also thought it made um hello little girl very very funny because the guy playing the wolf was literally like full-on abs like probably 30 something year old being like hello little girl to bernadette peters who is in her years shall we say she's just so iconic like every time she would sing a song i was like that was iconic like she sang send in the clowns and everyone was like dead silent because they were like this is bernadette peters singing send in the clowns right now like can't even believe that i'm here and listening to this i just I wanted to show you the program, which is the old friends program. It's got picture of Stephen Sondheim on it, and it's actually like properly thick, and it's got so much like info in it, and it smells really nice. <laughs> which is really random but it does. I'm just looking at this because it has a long list of all the, the songs and I wanted to go through and tell you what I thought. The songs they did the most of was Company which was like oh my god amazing for me because if you didn't know Company is my favourite show of all time. Bobby is my dream role like 10 years get me on a stage doing that please for the love of god. And it was nice to see some different takes on stuff so for example they sang the little things you do together from Company and it was Gavin Lee which was this this is the second show I've seen Gavin Lee in because 
because I saw him in the Beauty and the Beast UK tour and I actually don't remember who he was with but they sang the little things you do together which isn't how that song is normally staged within the show but I thought it worked so well to have like a conversational like vibe between the two of them because it just worked so well and they sang a lot of songs from company like I'm just gonna list them all because there was a lot so they sang side by side by side they sang company they sang the little things you do together you could drive a person crazy getting married today um the ladies who lunch being alive and then they sang side by side by side again so like that there was a lot of company in there which was grand also you can drive a person crazy with bonnie langford as the lead i'm calling it a win i'm calling it a win i loved it i thought it was so fun they also did an into the woods section and a sweeney todd section that was essentially like pretty much the whole first act and i was having a great time because if you didn't know those are my top three sometimes company sweeney and woods in that order the into the woods section i thought was a bit weird but i feel like if if you sing any Into the Woods song out of context, it is a bit weird. <laughs> especially with the songs they chose to feed into one another like we had agony and we had hello little girl which are both like the very very comedic songs of into the woods and it did become really bizarre at one point but it was so iconic that i was like kind of a sleigh but we did have Leia so longer singing children will listen and i was like oh my god oh it was so perfect <gasps> can't even they only had one song from a little night music which which was a weekend in the country and it just felt like a bit of a random Edition, but it's a great song so I was having a really fun time. I need to listen to a little night music more because it's such a me show like I don't know many of the songs but the songs that I do know it's very much how I sing and what suits me best so I should probably get into that. And then there was a long Sweeney section which like I said lays longer as Mrs Lover chef's kiss but just generally like I just thought a lot of it was very very well done but again some of the song choices were odd. Like we got the ballad of Sweeney Todd which was like oh wonderful chef's kiss and the worst pies in london which obviously if you're gonna do a swinging section you've got to do it then they did a segment of my friends which personally is a song that i'm not a big fan of i think it's quite boring and people feel free to disagree with that because i know it's most people's favorite but it's just not one of mine and then they did that into pretty women which is a, just a really random choice it sounded lovely but just a random choice and then into a little priest which is a fun song but can i tell you where was epiphany like if you're gonna do any song from sweeney do epiphany because it's probably objectively the best song in that show or joanna neither of those were done not joanna or the joanna quintet and i was like joanna is my favorite song in sweeney it's also really iconic so where's it gone they sang sunday as the act one closer and let me tell you oh tears to be fair literally the music started and i was already crying can't lie was already crying and i cried many many times in act one and sunday was the closer and it was great act two was kind of more focused on like more random songs he'd written as opposed to like show by show so it opened with West Side and this wasn't my favourite even though we had Leia Song singing somewhere which was great. It was a Tonight Quintet. I just don't really care for that song. I like West Side but like not enough for me to be like this was the best section of the show because it was. Um, we had Broadway Baby and this was just iconic because it started with Bernadette Peters auditioning for Cameron McIntosh and it was hilarious. And then we had all the women on stage just like coming together being like Broadway Baby and Slay in the House Boots. So couldn't lie. It was great. Then we had some Forum and some Gypsy and some follies and then there was a follies section let me tell you right we had i'm still here which is a song i've never heard before sang by bonnie langford loved it it was great like also as a side note bonnie langford is i don't actually know how old she is let me google it okay she's 59 i thought she was older than that but still an almost 60 year old woman can kick her leg up to her face and do the splits can i do either of those things no so just love her i really enjoyed that solo though because i'd never heard that song before and i was like you're doing great then we had could I Leave You? And I have complicated feelings about this. So, Could I Leave You is from Follies. Powerhouse woman song. Like, there was a Sondheim concert, it was quite a while ago, but it had Donna Murphy saying Could I Leave You? And it was in insane. It was phenomenal. Like, could not fault her performance. Um, if you don't know who Donna Murphy is, if you know Tangled, she's voiced as Mother Gothel in Tangled. Um, but she sang it and I heard the opening and I was like, okay, I'm getting prepared for a woman to come in and just obliterate it in a good way. And then Gavin Lee came on and I was like, okay, different take. And he sang it and he was great. Like, don't get me wrong, he was very, very good. But that song is such a female powerhouse song. I wish a woman had sang it. 
And that's just my take on that because I love that song and he did a great job. But it just, I, I would have loved to have seen a woman. Really random. But there's this song called The Boy From, which is from Side by Side by Sondo. And it's a take on The Boy From Ipanema, if you know that song. And oh my God, it was the weirdest experience ever. <laughs> like, it's a comedy song and it's so weird. And I'm a bit obsessed with it at the moment. I can't lie, I've listened to it like 10 times. But it wasn't half weird. <laughs> And that's all I have to say. And then this is the bit I have to talk about because it, it would be wrong if I didn't. And that is Not A Day Goes By. Not A Day Goes By is from Merrily We Roll Along. And at that point, the they had this like screen and it came down and it's all the women, uh, like the perf female performers came on and they started singing Not A Day Goes By. And I was already like, oh, this is sad. But then they started putting on a slideshow. I feel like I'm about to cry again. Oh my God. Um, And it was a on time and like him growing up and pictures of him with people like even people like Bernadette Peeps who was on the stage and like pictures with her and all the people that he inspired and it was just like a beautiful tribute everyone around me was crying except for the two people outside me who were like probably like why has this person been crying for literally like two hours but you could hear people like bawling and it was just a gorgeous gorgeous tribute to Stephen Sondheim and his contributions and oh it was it was gorgeous and beautiful and also what doesn't help was after the Sondheim tribute they had him there was a video of him playing the piano and singing and then they went into being alive which oh I was bawling I, I essentially just cried for the whole show because if I haven't said it enough already I love Stephen Sondheim <laughs> and then they finished and I cried even more I cried so much, I can't lie. I cried so much. And this is just an aside and isn't massively relevant other than the fact he's in the show. There is a guy whom I can't remember the name of, Jason Pennycook, who has been in more things than I remember him being in. But he was in BBC Prom's version of Kiss Me Cake. And I remembered him from that. And I was like, you slayed. And especially because he had quite a few solos in the show. And they were always placed after people that were more well known than him. And he just did not let it fumble. Like he kept it, even though I'm guessing that 90% of the people who were watching him had no idea who he was, even though he he was in the original cast, West End cast of Hamilton, which I didn't know. He kept it going and I really appreciated him doing that. But overall, from like a performance perspective, it was just a lovely tribute. And I very much appreciate that. Were all the vocals like the most amazing vocals I've ever heard? No, but that's not what it's about. It's about them being so iconic and singing the most iconic man's songs. And that was really all I cared about. And even from a technical aspect, like it was a very, minimalistic show it's kind of like you're halfway between a staged concert and like a staged production if that makes sense so there was like partial costume but not full costume and stuff like that but it just enhanced the performance like the lighting and the sound design and the set it just felt like enough for me it didn't feel like it was overbearing but it felt like enough for when it was placed if that makes sense and all in all i just felt like it was a wonderful tribute to the man the myth the legend that is Stephen Sondheim and I would like to go back I would like to see it again for my own personal viewing will I take that money out of my student loan not right now I gotta save all that money that I just spent because <laughs> I spent a lot of money this week and it was not good for my bank account but I think that's kind of all I have to say I feel like I said a lot if you want to watch old friends but aren't able to go to London there is actually a production on iPlayer if you're English I don't know if you can get I'd play her in America, I doubt it, but it might be on YouTube, I haven't checked. It's not the same cast, it's like other people. Some of the people are in it, but mostly a different cast. And it's a lot more of a basic production of what Old Friends is. And Old Friends is an experience that I just don't think you, you should pass up if you're able to. But if you're not able to, go and watch it on iPlayer if you can. And I will say it's not the same experience, but it is all of his music and it is people appreciating that. And if you want to appreciate Stephen Sondheim, go and appreciate Stephen Sondheim and watch the Old Friends concert. It's pretty much all the same songs and everything. So 
like they're not like worlds apart in difference but thank you for watching this video i hope you liked it if you have any ideas and you've actually made it this far into the video like comment subscribe down below do all of those things because it really helps me out you can also follow me at all my social medias which is x hope wilson x on instagram hope wilson with two ends and underscore on twitter and hope wilson 45 on tiktok and if you've done all that keep enjoying musicals as much as me and i will see you in the next one